This episode is brought to you by Distro Kid. This is the hunt for Grady Martin's fuzz tone. The origin of the Fuzz Dome began in 1961 with record producer Owen Bradley, country singer Marty Robbins, studio engineer Glenn Snowdy, and session guitarist Grady Martin at the Quonset Hut Studio in Nashville that Owen Bradley and his brother built back in 1954. It was during a recording session for Marty Robbins on the song Don't Worry. Grady Martin was playing his baritone guitar through the studio's newer console with Langevin 116 tube amplifiers inside. During the session, the transformer for the preamps had gone bad and one opened up while Grady was recording, making a fuzz sound. They later found out the company was in a transitional period, moving their manufacturing from New York to California and used faulty transformers and transistors in the console that was built for them. Snowdy described it as a complete disaster at the time. Grady even wanted to re-record it, but after listening back they decided to leave the recording the way it was. They didn't attempt to re-record the session or fix the console. In fact, they hoped the console continued to make the fuzz sound. Don't worry ended up reaching number one on the charts for 10 weeks. The fuzz tone was heard by everybody in the industry and became highly sought after. Grady Martin used the console to record instrumentals like the fuzz, tipping in, and twist and turn. Shortly after, they got word of Gibson's interest in the effect, so they built a non-tube-driven circuit that would reproduce a similar fuzz tone. They took it to Gibson in Chicago to showcase it, and after hearing the effect, according to Snowdy, the owner of Gibson said, that's it, we'll take it. That circuit eventually became Gibson's Maestro Fuzz Tone. The Hunt for Grady Martin's Fuzz Tone is brought to you by DistroKid, my favorite service to put music out to online music retailers like Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, plus 150 other online music retailers. It costs only $20 a year and you keep 100% of your earnings. I've been using DistroKid for the past two years and plan on using it for years to come, telling you it couldn't be easier to get your music out on every platform you can think of. I'll be using DistroKid to release SFW's upcoming album later this year. So be sure to check out everything else DistroKid has to offer. They literally take care of everything. The only thing you'll need to worry about is making music. Go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash SFW to get yourself a 7% discount on the first year. Just follow the link in the description below. Now back to the fuzz. When I first started playing, I had no interest in fuzz at all. I was influenced by electric guitar players from the 40s to the early 60s, the golden era of guitar innovation. Where the most radical guitar got was an amp's natural overdrive. I always thought of fuzz as more of a modern guitar effect. It wasn't until I discovered Grady Martin's The Fuzz and his solo on Don't Worry that I fell in love with it. I wanted to cover the tunes live with SFW and use the effect on some of my own recordings. But here's the question, what pedal can reproduce that original fuzz tone? The answer to that is none. There isn't a pedal designed to replicate that original fuzz tone Grady got from that faulty studio console. But that didn't stop me from hunting down some possible contenders. Starting at the beginning, Gibson's Meister Fuzz is close in character, but overall just not the tone I want. Interestingly, Gibson advertised it as sort of a synth pedal with this early ad. It's the Maestro Fuzz Tone. You can create guitar sounds never before heard. This is a sousaphone effect. A big bass saxophone effect. How about something sweet and sentimental? And the sound is that of a cello. Pedals like the Tone Bender, Big Muff, and Fuzz Face aren't options either. Most people already know the fuzz sound of Jimi Hendrix and The Doors. They're great sounds, but not that grady vibe I'm looking for. That took me into modern fuzz pedals. I started out by getting Wampler's Velvet Fuzz, and a few gigs into it I found I just didn't give me that grady tone live. Great pedal, but not what I was going for. Then I got turned on to the JHS Color Box. I read that it was based on the British Neve Studio console the Beatles used to get the fuzz sounds on songs like Revolution by driving the preamp. I thought for sure this was the pedal that was going to give me that grady fuzz tone. The pedal came close, but it still didn't feel the way Grady's recording did. 
I think part of what I love about Grady's fuzz tone was the mixture of the console's tone and that deteriorating vinyl sound. However, the color box stayed on my board for a good period of time. Until I discovered my current go-to to get that Grady fuzz tone. It's called the Cluster Fuzz by Function Effects. I noticed it on Gary Clark Jr.'s pedal board, and after some research I decided to give it a chance. The pedal's 8-bit feature combined with its cranked fuzz knob ended up being the closest Grady fuzz yet, in my opinion. Of course, it's not a perfect replica, but aside from its similar Grady tone, it's a versatile distortion pedal too. Here it is with my Martin hollow body strung with flat wounds in the neck position. Here it is with the baritone, just like Grady would have used. In a perfect world, I'd contact a company like JHS and have them make me a custom Grady Martin fuzz pedal. Until then, I'm using the cluster fuzz. If you know of a pedal that can get that original fuzz tone, I'd love to know about it. Leave it in the comment section below and click the subscribe button while you're at it. See y'all next time.